Hi there, and welcome to SciCare, the podcast where we talk about science, self-care, and all things wellness. I'm Robin Laird, your host, and as usual, I hope I'm joining you on a walk right now. If not, I hope you get a chance to move outside at some point soon. Today, we're going to be talking about the power of questions and how you can use them to become your own health coach of sorts. But first, let me share a little story. So in high school, I did a ton of sports, one of which was cross country, where we ran miles and miles per day. I mean, five miles was a recovery run for me back then. As a freshman at 14, I was put on the varsity team, and my parents and coaches had high, high hopes for my running career. (laughs) But my career was short-lived. After only two years on the team, I switched to volleyball, which I was notably not good at at all. (laughs) So at 16, I was placed on the junior varsity volleyball team, the lower ranking team. No one came to my games. No one had any expectations. And you know what? I loved every second of it. At first, I thought I just hated running and preferred volleyball, and that was why I had switched teams. But many years later, I started running on my own for myself, and I realized that running was in fact quite enjoyable. I didn't time myself or plan my routes, I just loved moving my body. And this habit of running for fun has long outlived my two short years on the cross-country team and continues to contribute to my mental and physical health to this very day. So why am I sharing all of this? Well, clearly, it wasn't the running itself that I disliked. It was my relationship to running at that time. The expectations from others, their orders and rules, these things made cross country unappealing to me. I felt as if I was in service to something outside of myself rather than to my own body and my own mind. And those feelings went away when I began running for myself. It makes sense. When you discover something on your own and do it for yourself, you have a different relationship to it. And I see a lot of parallels here with how many people approach getting healthier especially around the new year. They push themselves or even hire other people to push them towards goals that may not even be their own. They're often looking to be told what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. And don't get me wrong, depending on where you are in your health journey, this guidance can actually be really helpful. But you're not going to have the same relationship to your health goals if they've been given to you by someone else rather than self-defined through a discovery and learning process. When running was something I had to do, I thought about it very differently than when I approached it playfully on my own. I personally love to dive into the biochemical details of our body and nutrition and share that information, but I will never tell anyone what to do for their body. I'd much rather they discover that for themselves with a backdrop of biological information. Because here's the thing about human psychology, just because we are told to do something doesn't mean we will actually do it. I repeat, just because we are told to do something doesn't mean we will actually do it. In fact, the things we are told to do often become the things we actively avoid doing. In healthcare, medical adherence is a huge issue. People can be prescribed medication for their chronic condition, and they may never even take it. Expectations from others, whether that's a doctor, a parent, can turn any task into a chore, and strict rules can often result in subconscious resistance and rebellion. That's certainly how I felt in cross-country, and I believe that's how a lot of people feel in relation to their New Year's resolutions and health goals. So what's the solution then? How do we make sure we're progressing and growing without being pushed there? Well, this is where questions come in. Yes, questions for your health. I first noticed the power of questions when I was studying to become a health coach, someone who helps people adjust their lifestyle to become healthier. I realized that coaching, whether that's life coaching, business coaching, health coaching, coaching at its core is about guided question asking. A good coach poses a question, but never tells you the answer. Rather, they help you discover the answer for yourself. It's a process of learning rather than telling. When I realized this and experienced it firsthand, my mind was blown. How can simple question asking be so powerful? How can people use self-derived answers to address their own problems? If we already possess the answers to our problems, then what's the big deal? Well, of course, things and people are not always so straightforward. 
We all carry a lot of mental filters and extra baggage that obscure the simplest path to our goals. Let's take going to the gym, for example, the classic New Year's resolution. It's quite simple to go to the gym, you just go to the gym. (laughs) But anyone alive can understand that it doesn't feel this simple. It can feel like a monumental task to get yourself dressed, out the door, and on your way to the elliptical. And sometimes we may even be torn between wanting to achieve something and the fear of what success might bring. Maybe going to the gym also means receiving more attention from the opposite sex. Is this something we want? Perhaps not. We all have layers, self-limiting beliefs, preconceived notions about the world and ourselves. All of this can make it hard to view things differently and uncover solutions to our own problems. So how do we get past this all? Well, we do what coaches do and ask questions. We can all be our own health coach by continually asking ourselves questions in writing or in our heads, questions require pause. And good questions don't assume answers. So you may end up discovering new things about yourself, like maybe you do love running after all. And you can start very practically. So for our gym example, some questions you might ask yourself are, what's the greatest barrier to getting into the gym? Am I tired? Is it far away? Am I nervous about lifting weights in front of other people? Questions force us to address one point at a time through the lens of curiosity, not judgment or face value acceptance of the stories we've been repeating. For me, questioning why I had chosen to quit cross country helped me realize that a distaste for running was not at the root of my choice. So with regards to creating a New Year's resolution, here are some of my favorite questions to ask. What's something you've been wanting to do for your health but never seem to actually do? Why do you think you haven't done it? Where is the biggest resistance to doing this thing coming from? If it were simple, what would it look like? What's one small step you can take today to prepare yourself to do that thing in the future? These are just a few examples, but they illustrate how questions require space for thought and reflection in order to be answered. And that is so, so valuable. Questions prod at our autopilot mode, which, if left unchecked, can drive us to all sorts of crazy places like self-imposed social isolation as a response to loneliness, or eating chips at the thought of having to go to the gym today. So yes, questions are our friends. There's no judgment, just curiosity. So with the holidays approaching and many people gearing up to set New Year's resolutions, I'd like to invite you to ask yourself some basic questions that may help you avoid the classic February resolution drop-off. Because changing your life for the long term is hard, really hard, and if you're not clear on the deeper motivation behind your desire for change, it can be even more difficult to manage those challenging moments late at night, under work pressure, or when you're feeling socially disconnected. So one question technique to build a better understanding of your deeper motivation is called the five whys, developed by Sakichi Toyoda. This exercise is made to help us uncover the driving force behind our goals. It goes something like this. State a goal or desire, like I want to go to the gym twice a week, then ask why. Okay, I want to go to the gym twice a week, why? because I want to feel fit. So then you take your answer, because I want to feel fit, and then you ask why again. Why do I want to feel fit? Okay, well, I want to feel fit because I feel more confident when I'm fit. So then you take that answer, I feel more confident when I'm fit, and you ask why again. (laughs) And you keep asking why. You take your answer, ask why, take your answer, ask why. You keep asking why until you've asked why at least five times. This is designed to help you clarify why your goals are so important to you. And holding on to those deeper whys can make the harder parts of changing your life feel so worth it. And this is just one example, but the sky is the limit. Two questions I love to ask myself on a daily basis are, what's the worst thing that can happen? And what am I afraid of? By bringing my fears to the surface, they're much easier to manage. So there it is. The secret to health coaching is asking good questions. 
And although it's always powerful to have someone else guide you through that question asking process, you can already start to ask yourself some really basic questions today. Try the five whys, Google some other powerful reflection questions. Approaching our health through questions and curiosity is likely going to be more fun and more sustainable than following set rules or set orders. When you have a different relationship to your health goals, you'll likely be more inclined to actually stick with them. That's all for today. I'm going to go for a little run now. (laughs) The show notes include references to any resources I mention. Feel free to connect with me on Instagram at science.of.selfcare. Thanks for listening. Stay positive, stay healthy, and until next time, friends.